Today I want to look at solar panel shading, which of course is when something, well, gets in the way of your panel. That could be a tree or a building or all sorts of things can get in the way. Now it goes without saying that when your panel is shaded, it's going to produce a lower output than when it isn't shaded. Pretty obvious. But what happens when you have two panels connected together? What happens if one of those becomes shaded by a tree, for example? The effect of shading is probably quite different depending on how you've wired your solar panels. If we've wired them in series, like at the top here with the negative of this panel, positive, connecting to the negative of the second panel, um, well, it's going to be different to whether you've connected them in parallel, where the uh, positive and negative are commoned together. Um, there we go. So those uh, panels there are in parallel. Well, many solar panels have a bypass diode built within the junction box on the side. So if this panel is shaded, well, this effectively turns into a diode or possibly two diodes um, instead of a solar panel. So instead of generating electricity, well, it's now bypassing this panel which is well shaded is now in bypass mode and the power from the other panel goes through these diodes and onward in its journey but in parallel that simply won't happen and actually it's potentially possible for uh, if this panel was shaded it's possible for this second panel here to feed back into that first panel although it may have those bypass diodes well the uh, current can flow through the solar cells themselves and it can be a burden on the rest of the panels so first of all i want to do a little test on panels in series because well that's the way my panels are wired up at the moment as we're talking about losing energy in your solar panels when they're shaded, well, it's probably worth mentioning night, isn't it? When all of your panels are completely shaded. It could be possible for your batteries to slowly discharge through those solar panels at night when they become more of a resistive load rather than, well, an energy generator. But fear not, as long as you're using a solar charge controller, they typically all come with protection to ensure that the uh, solar power can come into the battery terminals, but it can't go from the battery terminals out to the solar. Now for this little test, my panels are wired in series, and we're going to see what effect shading has upon them. You can see they have an open circuit voltage here of 39 volts, which is a little bit lower than I would normally expect, but it's very hot today, and uh, there's plenty of sun coming down, so I think the panels are suffering with the heat a little bit, which is perfectly normal. I'm going to connect my MPPT solar charge control up to these two panels in a minute and we're going to see how much power we create when these panels are working correctly in series. I've got a good, what, 100 watt load on my battery bank at the moment so this should work quite well with 100 watts of panels and it's uh, roughly, well, it's not quite the middle of the day but we'll see. So if I connect... Um, the MPPT solar charge controller, you can see it's starting to ramp up the current there, uh, load down those solar panels, and uh, yeah, well, we're getting 60, 55 watts or whatever at the moment. That will settle down as the battery, of course, increases its voltage slightly. So um, let's see if we can get that to some sort of steady point there look 75 watts coming in okay so now i'm going to shade one of those panels and we'll see what effect that has on the voltage the current and of course the watts So with one severely shaded panel uh, we're producing 15.6 volts 1.67 amps 26 watts about a third of what we were producing uh, when both panels were in series so that's very interesting 
Right then, let me rewire the solar panels on top of the solar shed roof so they're no longer in series, but they're in parallel. And we'll see what shading has an effect there. So here I want to have a quick look at whether current really does flow into a shaded panel and if that shows an inefficiency in your system. So on the, the two port power meters I'm going to connect my two 50 watt monocrystalline panels. They're connected independently through these meters until they're commoned at this point. So they will be in parallel, of course, once they're both connected. The one on the right hand side now I've just connected up and that's showing 20 volts just under and starting to produce some power now as the MPPT solar charge controller starts to uh, bring that power in. There we go, we've jumped up to 27 watts on that panel. If I connect the one on the left hand side, well it is also connecting uh, creating sorry 27 watts so they are now in parallel they're both at the same voltage and producing a very similar current what happens now if I jump outside and shade one of these panels well that's what we're going to find out will f current flow from one panel into the other or will it not have an effect let's find out and there we have it look both panels are, are at the same voltage but this panel here on the right hand side is consuming 24 milliamps whereas the uh, panel on the right is producing 1.77 amps so 27 watts being created on one panel 375 milliwatts being consumed on the other panel so yeah there is an effect it's pretty small though isn't it and that is a severely shaded panel and now after seeing that consumption of energy rather than generation well i think diodes can be useful in this application as well when panels are in parallel just as they were when they were in series a diode on the output of each of your panels in parallel will prevent that backfeed. But then again, that's not ideal either. And that's because those diodes are always going to be in series with the panel, whether they're in use or not. And as you can see, diodes have a voltage drop. This is a normal sort of rectifier diode, and it's got a, a voltage drop of half a volt. So energy is being wasted here and of course that means the diode will also get warm and uh, well that could be improved with a uh, shock d diode here and uh, yeah much better 0 0.1 volt drop here but yeah it's still going to get warm it's still going to waste some power what if there was a better solution as an alternative to the traditional diode, you can now buy things like this, and this is sold as an ideal diode module. It acts like a diode, so it allows the current to flow from its input to its output, but not from its output to its input. And it's referred to as ideal because these are actually MOSFETs, not diodes, and they can be switched on and off. And when they are switched on, well, there'll be a very low resistance between the input and the output, so there shouldn't be any real voltage drop. And those MOSFETs are controlled by this tiny little SOT23, I think it is, six-pin package, which just has a capacitor on its input and its output. So when it detects that the voltage on the input is higher than the voltage on the output, well, it will switch on. And when the voltage on the output is higher than the voltage on the input well it turns those mosfets off so i want to try a couple of these ideal diodes now on my two 50 watt monocrystalline panels and see if we can get rid of that issue of one of the panels consuming energy when it's shaded okay i've got a similar setup to last time i guess two porter power meters here which are going to show the solar voltage and current coming in from those two separate 50 watt monocrystalline panels uh, they are eventually common together here just off screen at this point after going through the two ideal diode modules and then uh, when they come in together they'll go into the solar input of my MPPT solar charge controller and uh, that will show its stats down here 
as you can see nothing's connected at the moment no voltage no voltage and it's saying it's night time so without further ado let's connect this uh, this one on the right to one of those 50 watt monocrystalline panels and uh, we can see there the voltage is 19.9 volts open circuit and it's starting to uh, take some current now from that panel so that voltage will drop down as we start to create some power 30 watts there I do have a load on my battery bank to make sure that it doesn't top out. We can see there's a 12.5 volts at the moment, 30 watts coming in from that monocrystalline panel. So that seems to be working as it should. On the left hand side, let's plug in another panel. And uh, this port power meter is also showing 30 watts coming from the other 50 watt monocrystalline panel. So they're performing very evenly and of course the voltage is now the same because effectively they are connected in parallel and we're seeing that same 15.9 volts here 3.6 amps so 60 watts coming in to my uh, solar system from two 50 watt monocrystalline panels at the moment but what's going to happen when i cover one of those panels up well that's the next test isn't it so i'll go out there and do that right away right so with one of those panels covered now we can see on the right hand side we get 9.58 volts and no current flowing whatsoever so uh, that panel is only able to produce nine and a half volts at the moment and of course that is lower than the output of this ideal diode module so it's switched off entirely because on the left hand side we can see that it is uh, yeah 15.8 volts on the uh, solar panel that's in full sun just under 2 amps 30 watts there coming in uh, from this panel uh, and this ideal diode has switched off and that seems to be working quite well so we're still getting 2 amps into the uh, solar charge controller but that's half what we did have because I've now got a panel in shade let me go swap that over and check it going to work the other way i'm sure it will but let's check anyway there we have it then now only nine and a half volts being produced on this panel here but 15.8 and two amps on the panel to the right and uh, yeah that seems to be working perfectly let me uh, go remove that because i may as well make the power hadn't i while the sun shines so whether your panels are in series or in parallel Shading can cause some problems, but most of those can be fixed or at least mitigated with a diode of one form or another. You'll need to weigh up for yourself whether the losses over a Schottky diode or a standard rectifier diode are acceptable to stop that small amount of backfeed that can sometimes happen in shady conditions. But of course, my shading test was pretty extreme. I completely covered one of my panels, which typically won't happen with the neighbor's tree or the house over the road. Obviously, the best thing you can do is remove the item that's shading your panels, if that's at all possible. But otherwise, there are some other options. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.